As you guys already know, top of the month is always. Welcome to the P1K Podcast, where we lock into a free state of mind each and every pay week on all DSD, of course. And to my right, I got my main guy, my ace, my left, my right as we, Sean, better known as the singer on all your socials. You know. And me, Kenny, also known as Ken Cat, looking on your socials. But today, man. Um, How you feeling, brother? What's going on with you? Feeling good, man. Busy week. Uh, a lot of work, a lot of life, a lot of more life. A lot of parenting, you know what I'm saying? But um, outside of that, all in all, content, you know what I mean? Um, all in all, can't complain. Um, busy, okay. productive, uh, looking forward to the rest of the month, though. School's already, all three of them getting dropped off. You know how that go now. It's time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, yeah, other than that, week was, week was silent, man. It's week was silent. How about you, brother? Oh, man. Um. It's that interesting week where just I think a lot of people are trying to get things done before they go on vacation or they're coming back from vacation right now. Uh, it's also everybody's getting ready for budget season. So uh, everything's about numbers. It's about money. It's about making plans for the next fiscal year. So uh, just getting ready for that. Yeah, man. Uh, two quarters down, third quarter. You're only coming in swinging. You know the vibes. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, yeah, man, uh, first things first, you know, we like to start off with a couple of acknowledgements before we get into the show. I think the first thing I want to say is happy belated birthday to my homegirl, Michelle. Um, the lit party vibes was on point this weekend. Shout out to Denise for making all the plans and making us go right. Um, so it's, it's really just about vibing at this point. But uh, yeah, man, um, for Michelle's birthday, we ended up going to a place called Bosque or Bosque, or whatever or way it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, it's in Astoria, Queens, man. It was good music, good vibes, man. But, you know, it was a Sunday. And you know me, brother. Like, after us, about, I want to say, maybe mid-30s, Sundays became very questionable for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> very, very questionable, man. Um, it, it had to be something really important. For me to get out the crib and uh mm-hmm. this was definitely one of those events and you know how it is man like once you out you're like yeah i'm gonna have one you know maybe i maybe i have two drinks you know just so i don't look like the party pooper bro i was lit bro i, I was yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> getting, getting lit with the sun still out it's always a cool vibe you know what I'm like, it's always a cool vibe Dude, and i don't know i don't know where you were sunday but man that overcast came and you just knew it was about to pour you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It looked mm-hmm. it looked bad. So it was yes. crazy when you in a place partying and you see outside look so ugly. You're like, this don't even seem real. Like yeah. outside look like a whole bad situation, but in here it's a whole good situation. Super good. And I'm gonna ride this good one out for a little bit, see where it go. You know what I'm saying? You gotta just ride it out. That's what's up. Man. Shouts to Michelle. Always uh, I'm sorry, was this another Denise uh hosted event? You were saying? Uh coordinated, coordinated event, yes. Yeah. Interesting. Coordinated. All right. All right. I was like, seeing my number keeps getting left off these lists, but it's all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to see her one time for that watermelon that watermelon salad one day. We're going to see. We're going to see. <laughs> oh, man. And then again, man, uh, Saturday was the second time in my 40 years of being alive that my block, my block had a block party. And it was funny. Last year when they had it, Literally, the wife and I woke up and we were like, what the hell is going on outside? Like, there was like somebody talking on a loudspeaker. And where I live at, it's not um, uncommon for somebody to be talking on a loudspeaker. It could be for church, could be for God. They could be promoting something. But this was, this seemed like, you know, the same thing over and over. I'm like, let me look outside. And I see no cars on the block. I see a whole situation. So me and my wife, we like, oh, shit. And but we already had plans, so we came outside <laughs> all you know, dripped out, smelling good. Hey, like, oh shit, they about to join the black party. We're like, nah, fam, we're going me. We- Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping up with like, babies and shit. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, we leaving the borough, baby. I was like, really? You're not gonna stay. I was like, I didn't even know this was happening. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to tell you, boy. I'm out of here. So, you know, um, unfortunately, we couldn't stay last year. Um, but this year, man, we um we definitely participated in it. Um and you know, I, I I love my wife, man. She is such a trooper, man. She's such a good spirit. Um, you know, she she did a bunch of desserts and everything, and you know, I mean, she's a businesswoman. So you're thinking, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I'm gonna do my thing, you know what I'm saying? Sell some desserts, all that good stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Yo, we probably about like five, ten minutes in, and they come tap on the shoulder like, uh, yeah, one of the stipulations for the black party is you can't sell nothing. Bro. Yeah. 40 piece cupcake. What, what, what I'm going to do with all this? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> you know, the t- I, yo, a table would have uh, flipped out that motherfucker. You know what Jesus. I mean? Like, somebody would have had to just... Somebody would have had to come and stop me from selling, bro. But she's a soldier, you know what I mean? She took it on the chin. Um, she just used it to like connect with people and you know, hopefully she gets some orders out of it. Uh Thanks, but yeah, man, uh apparently you can't sell shit at black parties. I, I had no idea. I never I'm trying to think, like most of them are usually like uh funded by some sort of source, and it's just like, you know, like don't bring money kind of thing, especially for the kids, you know, and to kind of attract more families. Free events always bring more eyes, you know what I mean? So they probably just kind of keep that off the off the billboard. But uh, I get it. I get it. I'm trying to think if I ever pay for anything at a black party in my in my life. I, don't I never did. Doing so. <laughs> <laughs> I never did, but I respected yeah. the hustle because I was like, shit, you do it for Labor Day. Why wouldn't you do it for a black party? I mean, it makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, it didn't work out. Uh, but either way, it was a good time. It was hot as fuck, though. Um, it was a good chance to connect with neighbors. You know, there's a lot of people that usually li- live on the block. Um, but I really didn't stay outside that long because it was hot as fuck, and yeah. Olympics and UFC was on at the same time. So, Can't be that. Can't be that. yeah, I made my way upstairs more than enough <laughs> times until the last trip back up when I didn't come back down. <laughs> but yeah, man, that, that that was that was my weekend, man. Had good time. Hit him with the y'all. Hit him with the y'all. Yeah, I'm just running to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Lock, lock the door behind you, like ah. That's it. <laughs> like, that was right, it. Child. It's been fun. It's been fun. Now some black yeah. parties are dope, like um, just to get outside and, and everybody come outside at the same exact time. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you sit, you end up be like, yeah, Yo, you live on the block, yeah. How long? Like thirteen years? You lived on this block for thirteen? You know what I mean? <laughs> I've never seen. Yeah, man. That shit is always yeah. dope, man. Got 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 to mix with the got to mix with the locals. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, um, but listen, I know, hey, I, like you said, I know on Sunday sometimes you like to get your, you know, I might get a little drink on. Not a big one, you know what I'm saying? But if it's, if the, the mood is right, you know what I mean? You might get a little tight, you know what I mean? But have you ever seen one of the uh, the little Bartesian machines? Uh, no. Nah. This is a thing called the Bartesian, right? Where very similar to your coffee K-cup situation, you put your little pod in, select the kind of alcoholic beverage you may want, add some ice to your cup, put it under there, Comes on out, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I went, I went to Big Bro's house. Him and the missus real quick on a kid dr- drop off pickup. I'm like, they're like, I'm like, what's that over there? Like, oh, this over here. I was like, yeah. They're like, oh, you know, it's just, it's just just a new member of the family. You know what I'm saying? So they walked me over. They showed me. I was like, oh, what's it do? It's like, well, what kind of drink you want? I had like a whiskey sour option. Like I said, like, I'm going to whiskey sour. Jen got the martini. We was like, all right, let's get the gold. Like so, so now what do you do? You know what I mean? They threw the they threw the little, little K cup in. Now you had your bottles in the back for your gin, your vodka ready, you know, pre-ready to go. Boop, boop, boop. Like, would you like it strong or uh, regular? I said, I looked around, I said, strong, baby. Right, right. <laughs> I'm, here for, you know, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, you know? So I threw it in about, about 45 seconds. Yo, one of the best machine-made drinks I've had in my life. <laughs> wow. Yo, man, yo, I, I, that's going to be on one of my, uh, it's got to be on a Christmas list, not this Christmas, probably next Christmas, but. <laughs> so it's, it's a little dangerous to have a K-Cup uh, uh, bartender in the crib, man. But shouts to that, man. That was super dope. Okay. okay. That's, that's very creative. I like it. Yeah, man. Right. Dangerous, but but I got to purchase it one day. <laughs> I'm, uh, also, uh, some quick local uh, kind of nostalgia news for anybody that has ever listened to Reasonable Doubt. You know, one of the greatest rap albums of all time. Not the greatest, but it's up there. Uh, a lot of people's top 10 at a minimum. But um, that album was uh, distributed by Rockefeller Records. You might have heard of them before. Um, you know, Jay, Dame, Biggs, you know, came and went. Everybody went their way. Everybody, you know, got all the growth and all. Pause. But um, the U.S. Marshals have uh, let Dame Dash know that he needs to auction his stake in Rockefeller by the end of this month. And they're going to force him to do that. Um, he has a 33% share in that. So, um, yeah, come the end of the month, they're going to throw it up on the old chopping block and see who wants it for the highest bidder. Um, it sounds like uh, the opening bid is going to be about $1.2 and, um, mm. that's, and, uh, and, uh, and that's only the opening bid, so I'm, I, I, I can't even imagine how high it's going to go. This is Rockefeller Records. It's the piece of history. And uh, who knows how much it's going to be, you know, down the line. That's a, 
That's just whoever gets to get, whoever gets to get it. I hope I'm pretty sure Jay gonna have a guy there in the back that's like, oh yeah, two two million. Like you know, I mean, easy money. You know, I mean, he gonna be in the back trying to get that back for him. But um, what do you think about that? As, I, I know Dame ain't broke, but I, I'm curious to know how the U.S. Marshal could just kind of force you into auction like that if you got a couple assets on your on your belt. Well, Uncle Sam won his money. He gets his money, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to be somebody very special, very unique, or very wealthy to get around Uncle Sam getting his pound mm. of flesh. So I'm not surprised mm. by a U.S. Marshal, um, you know, approach like this. It's, hey, hey man, it, we're seeing a lot of our, our, you know, our icons go through some things these last couple of years, man. And it's, it's interesting, man. But hope, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure he'll land on his feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're gonna be. All right, you know I want to. I just want to know what, who gonna get the reason without copyright. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. <laughs> Very true. Very true. I mean, a lot of these artists been selling the the rights to their music for a while now. So yeah, yeah it will be interesting. Thanks. Thanks. Um, all right, man. So I just found out, man, did not know this. August is actually Black Business Month. I had no idea about this. Um, so yeah, man, if you got a popular black business that you want to go support, go support it. <laughs> what? Listen, man, I gotta start getting like the car facts on a few of these houses. Hey, I love this one, don't get me wrong, but when it's the first time, time you hear it, it's like, yeah, how. Did I miss all of them beforehand? Like, you know what I mean? Like, damn. <laughs> I, I did not get that email. And I check my email a lot. Like, you know what I mean? I did not get that email. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah, but uh, Black, Black Business Month, I'm down. I'm down. I brought this next one here, man, because I know, you know, you're an architectural uh, aficionado. You know, that's your industry. Uh, and it looks like a, a very um, notable real estate developer is actually suing the city over delays of a long planned life science tower in Kipps Bay. So it turns out New York City's long delayed plans to build a flood wall on the East River waterfront have derailed a new life sciences development in Kipps Bay with the builder, which is national developer Alexandria Real Estate, racking up tens of millions in costs as it waits for this new flood wall to be built by the city. Um, it turns out that they got approval to do this, these life science towers from Bloomberg way back. And now here they are still waiting all of this time just to get this done, man. As working in the architectural field, what kind of costs would a, a company incur just waiting for something like this? All depends on the real estate you own. Um <laughs> Vacant land along East River is going to be always expensive, and it's waterfront. So I'm pretty sure that in the very, <laughs> I would say hundreds of thousands probably, in just rent roll, just trying to keep that space going if you're going to be building something to that capacity. But um, on the developer side of things, um, I'm not sure you're familiar with, you remember the rumors maybe about seven, eight years ago now over by the um, Staten Island side of the, you know, the ferry that goes back and forth? They're supposed yeah. to be like a, uh, along with the mall that's here, the Empire Outlets, there was supposed to be also like a Ferris wheel and a few other attractions that were supposed to be built into it. Well, you know, the GC that gave the bid, they looked around and said, oh, this bid's good. Gave him the money for said bid. He outsourced some material that just wasn't, you know, uh, for US rights, you know what I'm saying? But hey, it was the material that, it's the material you call for. It's just, you know, it's not stamped by us, but, 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 but I found a cheaper version of what you needed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Long story short, this, you know, I mean, the material finally gets there and it's just not up to code, you know what I'm saying? But he's like, yeah, I spent all the money on that, man. I ain't got it. And there's no return policy on this. The, the, the number don't work, none of that. You know what I'm saying? So, so, he, so, so as you can see, you know, the, the first one never came. But um, it'd be like that, you know what I'm saying? Where, you know, GC is trying to cut costs here and there, you know, uh, you know, Rob, Peter, PayPal, a lot of them have multiple sites going at once. Everybody still got to get paid, you know what I'm saying? But, um, Sad part of the game sometimes. Sad part of the game. Man. It happens all the time. Damn. Damn, damn, man. Yeah, so it looks like, um, yeah, there was an agreement in 2019 uh, that authorized Alexandria to develop the third tower, the Economic Development Court, and H&H &H have stalled its plans by dragging their feet on a new flood mm -hmm. wall 
that was to be integrated into the development. Uh, this is alleged by their lawsuit. Mm, see, that sounds like a change order. Where, you know, sometimes we all agree on something and there's a number at the end of that to go, cool. You know what I mean? After all that money and, you know, stuff is kind of allocated, go, oh, yeah, by the way, can we add a boom, boom, boom to the boom, boom, boom? And everybody mm -hmm. looked around like, are you, are you paying for this? You, pay, right. like, you know what I mean? Everybody you know, stopped pointing fingers. Like, no, we'll pay for it. You know, just put it on the back end. and said, no, nah, we need that now for if you want that now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's how it be, man. It's tough. It's tough playing the game. Yeah, it's funny that you said that because I'm reading in here. It says that as part of the agreement, the city fraudulently fraudulently induced the developer to agree mm -hmm. to integrate the flood wall into its plan for the North Tower, stating the that the costs would be covered by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the project would not delay its new building. But it turns out that's not true because here they are still waiting. So Alexandria, through their lawsuit, is stating that they were misled by how long this project would take for this flood wall um, and how uh, delays on plans to build a North Tower have surpassed 50 million. Eesh. Eesh. It's rough, man. It's rough. It'd be like that, though, in a sad, sad way. And um, as soon as, as as soon as they heard uh, FEMA was behind the building, like, you know how long it took to get water in New Orleans in a crisis? Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't I don't think I'm waiting on that check, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he said those are necessities, and it took them some time. Like, this is an option. I'm not. I don't see that coming anytime soon. But um, yeah, true. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, hopefully, you know the developers get their money. I'm pretty sure. I know their stocks probably dropped a little bit this week. But hey, man, um, everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. <laughs> hope, hope it works out more. <laughs> oh, man. But listen, uh, moving on, August 5th, y'all. August 5th was the one-year anniversary of the Montgomery Brawl, a.k.a. Fade in the Water. That's when we saw the Black Aquaman take off to go help out um, Iron Man that was swinging the chairs. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> white chair went down in history, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we thought Bobby Schmerder was the only dude that threw his hat up in the air. Nah, man, this is the security guard when it was time to um, shoot the fair one, threw his hat yeah. up in the air and went to business, man. And listen, man, a year in the making, there's been all kinds of memes, all kinds of artwork. Uh, it is never a proud moment when violence is at the heart of it. But this was one of those moments where you kind of you kind of smirked at it, like yeah, yeah. They, they had that coming, <laughs> had, that, had that coming, and I'm just happy we had backup. I'm happy we had, backup. yeah. I'm rooting for everybody black on that one. Everybody black on that one. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, this uh, this week, um, as you know, there's a lot of presidential talk. We'll get into that a bit. But one of the main things this week was uh, Donald Trump trying to uh, can I say connect with the youth. So to speak, uh, did you see? Did you see his latest stunt this week? Oh yeah, man. I mean, he was on a podcast or like an interview with Aiden Ross. Not quite sure what the um, setup was, uh, but the interesting thing about it was there was all kinds of, I want to say, edited videos that had Trump walking out to many men at a uh, at a rally, and <laughs> it looks like finally <laughs> he actually did really walk out to many men. Yeah. Um, you know, it's. Like, like we talked about last week, brother, this is looking a lot more like head of state as each month passes. Mm. Um, but yeah, man, it's 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 interesting. Uh, yeah, um, I believe uh, Aiden Russ, you know, uh, he's back with kick. I know he retired for a little bit, which is like 45 days. But uh, he came back with kick. He came back to kick in a big way. And now uh, he brought the whole streamer set up to the Mar-a-Lago spot for Trump out in Florida. So um, it was it was weird, like, you know, what I'm saying seeing the old and the new kind of on the same platform, um, and, you know, Trump brings that uh, that energy. So he kind of just kind of reciprocated that energy because he just happened to be in his presence, uh, almost like a kid that didn't know any better. But he's like, hey, I'm here for the moment. So here we are. And uh, Trump just ate it all up. That's his job. He he loves the publicity, he loves the lights. But um, the, he gave him a gift at the very end of this interview. Um, the Tesla truck. Have you seen it in person yet? Yes. Yes, I did. What do you think Very about this truck? Right? Very gotta, intimidating. Like, it makes you step back on the sidewalk if you're about to jaywalk. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, nah, I'll let that shit go. But uh Aiden Russ wrapped a Tesla truck in the now um legendary, unfortunately, a Donald Trump pick where he got uh shot at, so to say. 
Um, he rapped the whole truck in it, and it looked kind of crazy on a rap. But then they got in the car, they listened to some music and shit. I'm like, yes, yeah, so you running for president? Or like, you got an album dropping? Like, it, just, it just felt weird. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah. if he's, um, but uh, Aiden was saying, uh, which kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but he's like, a lot of his viewers are like first time voters this time around, and they really don't know what to do. So they're going with what's cool, unfortunately. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And if, and if he's with Aiden Ross and he's like the number one streamer in the world, so to speak, he must be the one to be with. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's, Giving giving them the medicine through that kind of candy is bad. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? So, but uh, but we shall see though. We see how it's gonna work out. Yeah, I heard they even talked about like Thug. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Trump knows who Thug is, but it was interesting for him to be talking about his case. I mean, um, you know, we we had speculation that he had something to do with getting um Chef G and Sleepy Hollow out of jail. So mm-hmm. here we are, man. If he pulls that. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see slime at the inauguration, man. I mean, Trump is, he's showing us he, there are no rules when it comes to what he wants to do. And, oh man, this is this is going to be a very interesting race, man. Very yeah, interesting it, race. It already is. It already is. And, um, you know, and it's funny, the internet's out to chit chat about, um, well, what, how's Kamala going to respond to this? You know what I mean? What's she going to do? So naturally, everybody kind of gravitated towards uh, Kasa not, you know, the number one streamer on the other side of town, as far as uh, Amp is concerned. But Kai shot all that down in me. He's like, yo, I'm not here for the politics, man. I'm here to have fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, make this money and play these video games. You know what I'm saying? So I'm happy he kind of <laughs> took a step back out of that. He said, yo, y'all do what y'all want to do over there. I'm having fun over here, but leave me out of it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. They got that real bag, man. They got that real bag. So... It, <laughs> The, I mean, it's not like he probably needs it. I think he's got a good uh, influx coming in, but the government got a different type of bag, yo. So it'll be interesting if they make the offer, if he'll turn away from it. I was hoping they want those offers. He can't refuse kind of situations. It's like, <laughs> what do you mean? I better be there at eight o'clock. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I didn't sign up for this, you know? But uh, yeah. it, I don't know. If they do somehow end up at the same seat to have any sort of conversation, it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, man. Um, just waiting to see what's gonna happen with this debate, just you know, staying on it just for a little bit longer. Um, I, I think the biggest thing uh, right now is the issue between whether they're gonna do it on ABC or NBC. They bo- uh, both candidates have their reasons for wanting to be on the other, but at this point, man, it's 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 got to go down. I know there's some questions around who's going to moderate the joint. Trump has uh, his favorites. So we'll we'll see where it lands. I think the people want to see how he fares against uh, Kamala, who's going to definitely be a lot more sharper, uh, mm-hmm. alert, and, and pretty much ready to rock and roll. So yeah, just waiting on that news for when that's going to go down. And she answers your questions, which is what you want from these debates. <laughs> He's not going to, you know... Uh, work around, bring up other things. Uh, we're here for intelligent answers from a presidential hopeful. Please answer them directly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's keep this going as smooth as possible. But uh, what did you think about her choice for running mate? I mean, I'm not a big poli- you know, politician buff. Um, okay. You know what I mean? But she did go with Tim Waltz. He's a governor out of Minnesota. Um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, they're saying it was not a shock because he was one of the other considerations when uh, Biden first dropped out of the race. So, you know, he's a former congressman and in his second term as governor of Minnesota, uh, the state's Democrats have reliably won in presidential elections for dec- for decades, but that the Trump campaign has aimed at flipping this cycle. So we'll see what happens. Um, there was some interesting stuff that I read that he's done with health care. Um, over in Minnesota, uh, really just making sure providing health care for those who are uninsured and bringing that percent down um, mm-hmm. with his time out there. So that's a really good thing because everything about that uh, Project 2025 says a lot of the really good incentives for health care are going to be kaput. So um, I, I, from what I'm hearing, it looks like she picked a good one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, gotta wait and see. It's uh, very similar to you. I'm not I don't follow politics to the T like that. Um, I'm very like, 
MLB postseason only at the Yankees and kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really watch the whole, <laughs> I mean, at the very end, see what happens. Gotcha. We got a couple things, a couple cool things for the sports corner to get into, but I do have a couple questions for you that I came across this week. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> if you're in an interview, right, with the same sex, you know, guy to guy, of course, um, but they began to throw interested hits at you throughout this interview process. Are you temporarily entertaining these fake hints while shooting your shot for this potential job? Or do you, are you shutting all hidden agendas down at the door immediately? Oh, so you mean interested in hints like this this man interested. is interested, interested in interested me. Interested. Oh yeah, I'm sure I'm 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 like okay with that. Like Fuck this job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm ducking all of them joints. I need this job. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know what I mean? As long as you ain't doing nothing ridiculously crazy or saying nothing ridiculously crazy, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna ignore all that stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I want the, I want the gig. Um, nice. but I am in the back of my mind thinking, all right, do I want to work for somebody who does this all the time? Probably not. So it's something to think about. But true, true. good mentor of mine's always told me, you turn down the job you get. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> a good mentor of mine told me you only turn down the good the job you get, right? Yes. If I didn't get the job yet, what's the point of me thinking, oh, I don't want this job. I'd rather get it. No, I got a handle on it. And then re think about what I'm going to do, then just take myself out the running. And okay. honestly, I could have made something else out of it. Okay. All right. I was like, how are you going to do both, brother? But all right, cool. Okay. Um, I was thinking about this for myself. Like, I think I would be, like, if I was interested enough to the point that I'm putting on that, I'm putting in, a, updating my resume, filling out the app, submitting, getting the calls and the interview, you know, I'm getting the suit out the cleaners, showing up. I might be so blinded by these innuendos that I might just roll with it. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like going out on Fridays. Why do you ask? You know what I'm saying? Just having ca this cavalier conversation, not really picking up that it might be something. You know what I mean? So um, I'm hoping I'm able to recognize it in the event I am trying to get a new job one day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, uh, another question for you. <laughs> um, you know, uh, when, when we're married, it's, it's not really offend, uh, us really, but in the event, you're just bringing a new situation to your family, right? If your family or a child doesn't like your partner, do you end that relationship immediately or do you try to make that work to some extent? Mm. If your family doesn't like your partner. Um, I mean, I only see family on the weekend. <laughs> I mean, like, like, let's be real about it. Like, um, it depends, man. It depends. Because <laughs> I don't mm. think I'd like somebody that don't, my family don't like. Um, you know, I, I always try to be mindful of symmetry. I won't mm -hmm. let that totally disconnect me from connecting with someone if I feel that bond is there. But I really can't see me being with someone who who y'all wouldn't like. Uh, right. But if y'all, but if the odd situation happened, man, and we're talking like we talking like either like Sanaa Lathan, Chloe Bailey esque man. I I see y'all at Thanksgiving. I guess you know what I mean. Like <laughs> he said, the, he said the pros and the cons on this. Just uh, love y'all, and y'all know I've always loved y'all. But, but <laughs> the way like the way my love is structured now. <laughs> yo, like it, like if she checking all the boxes, like y'all ain't got to talk. Like she could just sit real pretty at the end of the table, you know, on her phone, and we could just chop it up. You know what I'm saying? And then. That'd be that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, like I was thinking that in my head. I'm like, hey, if this, you know, I just met her a week ago, whatever. It's not that serious. Like, I, got, I can move on. But, you know, if I met her, you know, shit, two days ago, her name Hallie and last name Barry. I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I hate to blow the deuces to the fam, but <laughs> damn, she said the jet was ready and I had to go. <laughs> so I was like, you had to go. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, she dumped me though. I'm gonna be at Christmas looking at them like, yeah, y'all was right. I'm... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, All kinds of apologies. Real talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man. 
Uh, before we switch over to the FCP Sports Corner, man, I had a really, really cheap joke for you, man. Um, mm -hmm. I know last week we were talking about, you know, the possibilities of getting older and try 70s and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what, brother? If I am fortunately blessed to make it to the age of 68, I just want to skip ahead to 70, man. You don't want that number? You don't want that God number on you? Because listen, man, 69 has never favored a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's more work than it is. For, it's more work than pleasure, but people don't talk about that a lot, but whatever. Nah, they don't talk about how we suffer in silence in the 69. Lot. Every it's man suffers on. in silence in the 69. Either you're damn near being stifled to death, yeah. or, you know, she forgets yeah. about this is a team sport. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's, like, that's yeah, my it's hard to. That's yeah, my it's... cheat joke. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey. Welcome to the FCP. Like, you know, <laughs> if this is your first time, hopefully it's not your last time. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, man, it's a it's a lose-lose relationship. You know what I'm saying? If somebody's winning, most likely somebody else is losing. Both to be winning at the simultaneously just rare. You know? <laughs> oh man. All right, y'all. At this moment, we are switching over to FCP Sports Corner, man. Can you take us away on the NFL? Listen, man, um, as you know, big brothers always watch you. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they got your IDs. They got your credit cards. They, they got your GPS on your phones. They got it all, man. These cameras everywhere ca catching your cars, your red lights. You're going five miles over the speed limit. They're there watching you. But now with the NFL, this upcoming season, if you are to attend a NFL game within an NFL stadium, you will be walking into a um, pretty sophisticated face recognition program that they have uh, installed at all stadiums coming up for the season. Um, it will, you know, identify you if they need to find, do a little bit more research. It'll be more about a snap of a finger versus, you know, um, trying to find out what section that person was in, what seat they have, who bought the ticket, was it really that, you know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be a lot easier for them to track who you are. Now, when you first heard about this, uh, were you bothered by it or was you just are you more welcoming to that news? Man, Big Brother's always doing something to get ready for the next step. And right now, I feel like we're a case study for something that the NFL is planning or something that the government's planning, and they're using NFL games to do it. My biggest problem here, right? Currently, I am pending an application to get global entry, and that shit is taking forever. But you mean to tell me now, if I go to a Giants game, you are going to be able to scan my face and get all the information you need to see that I'm a good person. But you mean to tell me when I come back into the damn country, I have to pay to maintain something so that I can get back in and not be on that long ass line with everybody else that's all vacationed out and just want to get home because of you needing to me to go through this interview process. It's insane how backwards we do things in this country just so they can get money out of us. It's nuts. And they're gonna find a way to find you whether you're there or not. So like, you know what I mean? You're gonna, they're gonna get their money. Uh, when I when I first heard the news, I was like, listen, as a civilian, you know, a tax paying, um, hopefully no warrants out, you know, you know, civilian guy. This 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 is a good thing as far as safety concerns. You know what I'm saying? Um, if there's somebody that shouldn't be there, great. You gotta identify them, get them out quickly. Then I thought on the other side of it, like if I like criminals or someone who just green card might have expired like two weeks ago and they didn't, you know, waiting on some paperwork. You know what I'm saying? But hey, I got to take us to a Giant game. Want to go? Yeah, I love the Giants. I'm not, you know, I wasn't born here, but I, I'm a Giant fan, you know? I just don't want you getting hemmed up in the second quarter like, yo, we got him. We got him. <laughs> we got him. What do you mean? Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, oh, man, the backlash is going to be terrible. <laughs> Fourth and one, man, for the game. Time out. We got to get rid of this guy over here. <laughs> Section 200. Like, come exactly. on, man. <laughs> I, got, I got my password to the card. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be terrible. Yeah, um, be so, yeah, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely two sides of that coin, man. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, man. I haven't been to a, a, a giant or jet game in a little bit, but I don't know if I'm in a rush now. You know? <laughs> yeah, no. Definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, some more uh, NFL news, uh, as we as you heard here as well a few weeks ago, uh, Jacoby Jones, the um, NFL standout who passed away a few weeks ago at the age of 40, 
Uh, it was a bit of a sudden death. It wasn't sure of the reasons why at the time, but it turns out he ended up passing away due to a cardiovascular disease. Um, mm. very, very unfortunate, especially at 40. But um, that was all I was able to get from that. I believe it was on CNN I saw earlier. So um, once again, uh, condolences to the family, but for those that was curious, that was why. Damn. Damn. Rest in peace, brother. Rest in peace. Um, so the Olympics has been a blessing to me. And I, everybody I've had a chance to talk to about this, I've said the same thing. There's nothing like waking up at 5 in the morning and basketball being on. I could do that for the rest of my life. I could watch sprinting, swimming, volleyball, and all kinds of other sports all at the same time, first thing in the morning for the entire day. This is wonderful. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But just to give some honorable mentions for our U.S. participants, Noah Lyles, man, he won the gold in the men's 100-meter sprint, uh, first American sprinter to win a gold medal in the men's 100 meters since 2004. Um, it was literally a photo finish. Did you happen to see it? Won by a chest hair. <laughs> 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 but hey, man, the, his torso crossed first. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. When I seen the photo, I said, "Hey, look at that foot!" But you know, I had to I had to I had to sit back, get the rules read out to me. I said, "Ah, torso are better." Didn't know that. Now I know. Yeah, okay, but uh, yeah, he he won that one with his chest for sure. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, you know, shout out to Shane Thompson and Fred Gurley. I mean, they was right there with him in it. Um, I remember Fred Gurley from the documentary on Netflix, Sprint, uh, and he definitely was looking forward to coming back and doing better. So, bronze ain't bad, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, still a medal, still going still home medal, some jewelry. Still a medal. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Uh, I mean, better than nothing. You don't want you know, fourth place gets nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, be happy, be proud. Um, if you do recall, uh, Noah allows um, kind of made a splash this time last year, um, around the time um, when there was the NBA championship. And, you know, they called them world champions. You had a big kind of soundbite of world champions of what? You know what I mean? As far as just being the United States champion. So um, it's funny at his 100 meter race this past the other day, the entire USA basketball team was like front row. You know what I'm saying? Just hey, USA supporting USA, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I got a feeling though, shit, if shit went a little, like if he didn't have his chest out, like they was, I think they was ready to talk some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, absolutely. Um, um, but hey, all in all, hey, US is there for the US. It's all a love, love relationship now. You know what I'm saying? So they just got to go do their part because he will be in the front row when it's daytime. <laughs> I can believe that. You know it. You know it. And we talked about that too. We was like, if he slip up, it's mm -hmm. going to be a problem because they're going to remember that and be like, Oh, what happened, homie? <laughs> mm -hmm. right. You ain't you ain't the world champ. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, on to the women, man. Uh Gabrielle Thomas. Uh, she was able to win the gold in the women's 200 meter sprint. Uh, homegirl is also a Harvard graduate as well, a phenomenal athlete. If you remember, I think during our live show last week, Sharika Jackson had actually dropped out of the 200 meter she was actually the 200 meter queen um i believe in the world nationals so it'd be interesting now i mean gotta wait four more years right so in 2028 it'll be interesting to see if sharika comes back to try and claim her title back but for now gabby thomas is holding on to it shout out to you mm -hmm. then going over to shikari richardson or shikari richardson I'm learning to pronounce these names correctly uh, Shakira Richardson brung home the silver in the women's hundred meter. Um, and listen, I think Ramel posted it best. Since when is silver a bad thing? Like, never. Second in the world, you gotta understand that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a, like the world's a big number. You know what I'm saying? Second is damn good. So please, um, th th there's no falling short on this one. Absolutely, man. But yo, shout out to uh, Julian Alfred of St. Lucia winning the gold, man. Um, she was definitely a tough out, and she brought it uh, in both of in both her um was her semifinal heats, and then of course in the final. Uh, and then shout out to Melissa Jefferson bringing home the bronze for USA. So mm -hmm. really, really cool, man. And uh, one other weird thing, as far right before the race, um, 
Uh, Shakari, uh, her hotel was located at a, it was different from the rest of the team at the moment. So her entry into the venue kind of got stalled by security. There was some issue where her and, uh, as well as Jamaica, Shelly Ann Frazier, Price was unable to get in through that way. So they had to walk a significant amount of distance and took a bit of time to get to a separate entry to get in. They ended up missing warm up. And due to that, Shelly Ann ended up pulling out of that 100 meter race. You know what uh, I mean? So, um, so it was kind of weird. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not like where nobody's trying to get into this uh, venue. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my credentials of, you know, USA and Jamaica aren't good enough, then we obviously have an issue. You know what I'm saying? But I went, hey, if she'd have, she was able to warm up, she probably could have got that gold, but we'll never know. We'll never know. Right? Right? There'll, <laughs> we'll be, there'll, always, there'll always be that asterisk on this for now, just because of that. Thanks. Oh, man. And going over to the U.S. women's gymnastic team, man. These girls just keep on collecting medals, especially Simone Biles. Um, she actually picked up another gold medal in medal in the women's vault. So she now has, and this could be <laughs> need an update by now. Uh, she now has seven gold medals, one silver and two bronze. Uh, second most gold medals in Olympic gold women's history, as we stated before. Uh, Jade Carey uh, picked up the bronze. And Suni Lee won the bronze in the women's uneven bars. Uh, it's phenomenal what these young ladies are able to do uh, when it comes to gymnastics and the impact they also have on young girls out there who um, are looking for role models who look like them. It's tremendous. So shout out to them. They get like they get 11 feet off the air. Her jumps. <laughs> she's amazing. She's the most, she's a, she's a world-class athlete for sure. Absolutely. Um, and then Katie Ledecky, man, uh, she won her fourth straight 800 meter freestyle in swimming. Uh, she won the gold. There's supposedly footage out there of her as a baby, and Michael Jordan is kind of like playing this hide and seek game with her. Uh, they they showed it when she had won the gold. That that's that's legendary, man. <laughs> when when you a baby, you're you're hanging out with a legend like that, and then you become one. Oh man, like you know, mad people are gonna be like, "He'll touch my baby." <laughs> Please <laughs> pass the sauce. Please touch my baby. Pass the sauce, yeah, MJ man. sauce. But oh man, pause. That's the, that's dope. Uh, when when <laughs> now celebrities have dope baby lives, when other like grown celebrities is always super dope. Yeah, yeah man. Quick, uh, but quick shout out and salute to all the archers, man, the sharpshooters, shit, the ping pongers, volleyball on the beach players. And uh, hey, they've been keeping me interested in these games in between the track and field and gymnastics and basketball, man. Holding it down. I, haven't, I don't think I've been this involved in the, in the Olympics in a while. Yeah, man. Yo, listen, I was on the treadmill this morning and they have the, the five, what is it, the 500 meters <clears throat> and then the 5,000 meters. Um, and it's amazing, man. These guys are just running laps, like 11 laps. You know, trying to stay steady, trying to, you know, save yourself for the entire time. Mm-hmm. But then you can see during that last leg, man, it's a couple of tumbles. And depending on where you're placed, man, one tumble, you could take maybe three or four other runners down with you. So it was crazy to watch that. I had to make sure I didn't fall off the damn treadmill <laughs> watching <laughs> them fall. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Um, so over to basketball, man, we are officially in the knockout rounds. Uh, Greece definitely looked like in the first quarter they were going to stun Germany the other day. But Franz Wagner and um, Dennis Schroeder, man, those guys are tremendous and they actually have a really good team. So Germany ended up advancing. Uh, man, listen, yeah. Gian- Giannis has to figure out how to get some some better players on that team. Those those guys, they just, they didn't know how to get the best out of him. You know what I mean? Move the ball around. Don't be stagnant. Like, he needs movement. He needs a, a creator. It was just, it was just tough to see Giannis in that light, man. Yeah, he can't do everything. He's not the guy to do everything. So they're looking at him, wanting him to do everything. He's like, dog, I'm still a center. Yeah. Man. I know I'm the, yep. I might be the star of the team, but I have a role to play. And this is a team sport. I need y'all yep. to pull y'all coach strings a little bit. <laughs> Help us out. You know what I mean? So um, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull it together. It's game time. Time's on right now. Definitely. And then um, Australia, man, they got uh, Josh Giddy and Patty Mills over there. 
they actually took Serbia, uh, that's Nikola Jokic and Bojan Bogdanovic, to overtime. Very shocking. I thought that was going to be an easy run for Serbia, but Josh Giddy showed up. Patty Mills showed up. I think he almost had damn near 30. And the announcers were talking about it. Like, guys who we see in the NBA who are, like, role players, they put on that comp not company. They put on that country jersey, and they turn into, like, super superheroes. And they mm -hmm. want to do it for, you know, for country. And they, they gave them everything they got. But Jokic was able to get out of that mess. But, bro, Canada. Canada was supposed to be set up to be, I think, the second best competition to the U.S. other than Germany because of having Shy Giglius, Alexander, Dylan Brooks, Jamal Murray. Like, they were stacked over there. R.J. Barrett. They, they had a lot of good guys. And Victor Webinyama didn't even have the best game. <laughs> it was two other dudes that was just giving them the work. And Canada just couldn't bounce back, man. Like, it, it, it couldn't get anything going. <laughs> yeah, man. So they got ousted, man. France is on to the semifinals, I think, where they're going to take on um, Germany. And then, of course, U.S. probably saw all those three close games and said, fuck that shit. Brazil ain't stand a chance, man. Thanks. Thanks. Brazil, did, Brazil did not stand a chance. I think in like the first 10 minutes, no, 10 minutes, 10 minute quarter. I think in like the first three to four minutes, they was up by like 10, 15, and they never looked back. They smoked them boys by like 40 or something like that. Um, but yeah, man. And so the semifinals are set up, I think, for tomorrow. Germany and Australia. And then Serbia and the U.S. again going at it um, before the um, uh, before the final. Yeah. Uh, there was so, uh, yeah. one. There was one weird moment the past few days on the Olympic circuit. Um, there was one of the uh, pole vaulters, uh, one of the gentlemen. Um, oh, listen, there, uh, was he, there was two. There was two. There was. There was two. Let's let's um, let's go with the one that 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 doesn't involve manhood first. <laughs> okay, uh, there was there was one gentleman, you know, what I'm saying, you know, <laughs> had the shoulders working out, you know, what I mean, look at he's doing all his stretches, he's ready to go, you know, had it up, you know, what I mean, he's coming down a row, you know, what I mean, he stuck it in, yeah, he, he had the lead, you know, what I'm saying, and he was on his way up, and we were like, okay, he might, but like he like. He was going, and then like somebody hit the reverse switch on him. So like he kind of just kind of faded back. <laughs> and it's like, damn, I don't think he's gonna go back up. I think I don't. Ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? He like dropped the stick, hit the, hit the mat, and everybody's like, "Yeah, the back's on the other side of the stick. What's he doing?" Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not supposed to fall that way. I mean, it's super embarrassing. But um, yeah. hey, man, you get up, you fail, you try again, man. But that was embarrassing on that stage for the moment. <laughs> yeah, I got a strong feeling he was supposed to let go of the stick pause. Um, but point. he thought I guess he thought his core work was gonna help him at that point. <laughs> like, right. Engage your core, engage your core. Right. He said, eight pack, don't fail me now. Like you know what I'm saying? He was on his way. He was he was like he had all he had all the momentum right off the lift. And right, right after that lift though, it was all down. <laughs> yeah. All of um, it. then there was one other uh gentleman, unfortunately, uh, who made it over. He was there. Like he actually, he was able, hey, he, he had the same startup, you know what I'm saying? Stuck the landing, got on up, you know what I'm saying? He was over it, let, let it go right on time. Bro, he was, <laughs> he was, he was so close, man. He almost got over it, but unfortunately his beef got caught on the stick and it was rough, man. Everything, everything after that just went downhill, man. It was, it was rough. Um, he was there, man. I know he was mad, but hey. I heard the endorsements have been rolling in ever since. You know what I'm saying? So shouts to that man. Um, Yo, hey man, get it how you live, man. <laughs> get it how you live. Listen, man, <clears throat> Winston Churchill, man, never let a crisis go to waste. <laughs> Turn it into a bag. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. All right, all right, man. Um, at this point, we're gonna go over to some quick TV show, movie, and music recommendations, man. We're starting off with Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks took a interesting turn this year, and they decided to do a off-season training camp and in-season. So I think last year or the year before, they introduced the in-season piece with the already existing training camp version. 
But this one was off season where they pretty much took you into the administrative office, right? With their GM, um, Joe Shane. And it was in the beginning, I was really skeptical. I was like, wait a minute, where's, where's the football? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's what's happening here? I didn't read what was happening. I was just so hard knocks. I thought I was gonna see training camp. But then after a while, I'm seeing it and it was really cool to see like the process that they have to go through to try and keep free agents to start um, studying the free agents in the market, seeing what positions they need, seeing what money they have to spend, getting ready for the draft. If any of you kid, young kids have any aspirations of becoming um, a GM or being in the front office of any team, this is a really, really good show to watch. Hard Knocks continues to expand their brand. Uh, I really have to look up the creators because I swear every year they take on something new and it, and it's masterful and it just gets better and better. But uh, you saw the negotiations with Saquon um, behind the scenes. You saw the free agency where they picked up Brian Burns, uh, Runyon Jr. and Devin Singletary. And then just the artwork of the draft and, and being patient, you know, after getting that, just getting their prize pick, uh, Malik Neighbors. And then, of course, you know, the rest of their picks, just kind of being patient, finding the right guys they saw fit for the team. I thought that was dope, man. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, the Hard Knocks editors, they always, they always nail it as far as making sure they show you what you're supposed to see and that make you feel like you're really on the team for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's dope. Yeah, and I give it to Joe Shane. He's got a very diverse uh, office there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I saw a brother. Mm -hmm. I saw a lady. You know what I mean? Like he, he's got a he's got a very diverse uh, work group there, and it looks good. So, training camp will feature the Bears, um, and I think that's going to be interesting. And then, of course, the end season this year is actually going to feature the entire AFC North. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. A couple teams over there. I want to see some behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, even with the best training camps, it's gonna be dope without uh without your old starting quarterback there. So that should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Big, facts. Big facts. Big facts. So um, this is that part of the show, man. We love y'all, we really appreciate y'all. But we about to get into uh, House of Dragons, man. Just just when I thought <laughs> things were good, just when I was hype about this show, this season finale was it was disappointing, y'all, but before we get into it, this is our spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We totally understand if you have to leave, and we will get started in five, four, three, two. What the hell is going on, Kenny? Like, Ooh, so how did we go? A, a six pack of <laughs> ass, bro. <laughs> how did we go from a 20 piece of barbecue chicken to... Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, like, uh, so, oh, was so, man. to Tyson like, chicken. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, because remember last week we spoke about some listen. If somebody don't get cooked like the first ten minutes, I'm gonna be tight. Yeah, uh, I was uh, ten minutes went by, fifteen minutes went by. Then at the thirty minutes, went by, I started looking at the clock. I was like, they got a lot to squeeze in this episode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I started getting nervous. I'm like. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yo, baby, this is a two hour finale or something? Like, I don't, <laughs> they run out of time to do the stuff I think they, they trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm Ooh. just like, I'm like, maybe it's two hours. I don't, I don't even want to hit no buttons. We'll, we'll see how it go, you know? <laughs> Ended up being a 70 minute trailer, bro. I was, I was yo. yo. I was so tight. Because I'm, 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 I'm thinking just like you. I'm seeing everybody like gearing up, you know, getting their armies ready. And I'm like, something ain't right. You know what I mean? Like, we, we've been watching this for a minute, right? Like, something not right. I feel like they're going to cut out on us. Like, it's not making any sense for me right now. So now, uh, I, well, let's talk about what happened a little bit, right? Um, So it started out with Tylen's challenge, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's in the middle of somewhere. And, you know, Shorty starts whipping his ass in the mud, talking about, have you ever eaten the flesh of your enemies? I mean, thank God she was just joking. But yeah. you know, ha having to do all that to get an army, man, I, I, that, that was a lot. He about to walk into a whole polygamous relationship on that boat. He don't even know it. Like yeah. he, <laughs> she's like, "I want you to have to have my kids." No, not me, silly. My wives, my wives, and mm -hmm. they never answered the question. So I'm, I'm curious to know how that's gonna work. But yeah, it's gonna be some, some rocking on that boat. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, and then when Aegon was just laying up, hearing all the bad news, uh, when when he said <laughs> when he said the words, his cock is destroyed. I was I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad because this is not the form, this is not the form we met you in this early season. You know what I'm saying? I knew it was bad, but to use the word destroy it, like, like, like the shit must be rough, like bangled, like 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 non-workable, non-usable, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, yeah you know, my, my suggestion, you know, <laughs> take a beeline off the tower top, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, it's no, it's rough. It's rough being Yo. the king, man. <laughs> it's rough being the king. Yo, that, that was tough business, man. That was tough. He said, I can't even piss without it running down my leg. That's was, that was bad. That's tough business, bro. You're a leaking. You're not even pissed. You're a leaking, bro. That's, that's bad. bad. That's bad. That's it. That's it. Um, and then Eamon, you know, he was trying to get his sister to fly out with the dragon and, and, and you know go, you know, go do some damage with him, but she wasn't with the shits. You know what I mean? And then, you know, she had that scene, man, where she was really, she was really telling him off. I thought he was about to throw her off that cliff. I thought it was too. I thought it was time. I, it was time. I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, you know. You gonna ride or die, bitch? I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, he about to yeah, do it to her. I'm like, he really just out for blood. Do we really know if Aegon's dragon is dead? Yeah, we don't know, done. brother. That dragon yeah, done so. He got, I, he got, listen. he got cooked with his master, bro. <laughs> 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 then we, then we rolled one body out of there. Yeah, no dragon. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Oh, um, and then Sir Christian, man, I give it to him. You know that that was real gangster when the Queen's brother. Tried to have the sword to his neck, and he was like, "Bro, I'm ready to die, baby." Like, <laughs> you ain't saying nothing but a word. I want to know who snitched, like, cause they out in the streets. It wasn't like it was, it was like you saw something on the gram, like you know what I'm saying. Like, how do how did yeah. you know? Like, some like your, your sister wasn't even out here with us the last X amount of days. You know what I'm saying? So, who yeah. who, who dropped the ball and told you out here in the field? That's fucked up. Like, I'm looking at yeah. all my men funny. Yeah, they probably, oh, I, was, I guess somebody sent a pigeon or something, man. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he figured it out somehow, man. Who the hell know? But, um, but then you see, you see Shorty, um, with the with the white hair braids, she's just like dying in the fields, man. Like, I, I gotta go back to watch that to see how, what's happening with her. Me and Jen was watching, we're like, how did she end up here? Like, you know, so we, we just like, we kept looking at each other, like. Cause she, I remember, you know, they seen the lady close the gate. She left for her man, and they walked the other way. And she kind of veered off, but I didn't pay yep. too much attention to it. But she veered the fuck off. Like she never, she never caught back up to the pack. Like, yep. you know what I'm like I was like, all right, man. I hope she find her way. But you know, she found a dragon. So hopefully, was that her dragon? Like whose dragon was that? I don't know, man. These drag people <laughs> just out here claiming dragons, man. You like know, name tags on these dragons, no yo, chains. I don't know. This shit, yo, it's like somebody pull up. Somebody pull up on you with a dragon now. You don't know if they like you know friend of foe, nigga. <laughs> like word, friend of foe. Word. Like, I don't know. <laughs> word, word. Targaryen or no Targaryen. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's questions to be asked now. It's rough. It's rough out there. Big facts. Oh, big shit. facts. Um, and then listen, man, exactly what our prediction was. Corliss is, you know what I'm saying, the father. <laughs> Both kids. Both them boys. <laughs> and yo. You could tell throughout the season, man, Homeboy was trying to keep his cool with him. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah. you know that I know that you ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But here you are yeah. trying to big me up and trying to be in my life now. Let's not do this. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Let's just, you know, call a spade a spade. But he called him out on it, man. He called him out and he pretty much told him, you know what I'm saying? Don't, 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 you can't absolve yourself, bro. You was not there. Word, word, <laughs> word. Like, I don't know where you was. I guess you said C. But you definitely yeah. wasn't at the crib, like you know what I'm saying. So that's rough. And hey, um, if that is true, I, we got another dragon rider, my man. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there. And I'm not gonna lie, when 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 we had that conversation and they identified that he was the son, I was mm -hmm. really hoping word was gonna get back to the queen somehow. When that nigga was acting cocky at the other end of that table, I was like, yeah. nah, this, this this funny nigga gotta go. B, I don't like his attitude. Oh, you yeah. not respect it. You not respecting the table. I don't like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. They gotta get they gotta get him up out, out of there. But I know she's low on numbers, so everybody counts. I know, right? Yeah, it's like that annoying ass coworker. It's like, fuck, man, we can't get rid of him yet. We need him. Yeah. <laughs> he's good. He's good with numbers, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and then, yo, the infamous conversation between Rhaenyra and the Queen, uh, son for a son, man. Straight up told her, like, <laughs> so, so you, you know what? You know why I live at? <laughs> like, we, we, I got mad heat. We coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, I mean, but how, how'd you feel about? <laughs> About about the king sneaking out the back door, man. What was your thoughts on that, bro? <laughs> that was, yo, to me, that was smart, yeah. man. What he, he, remember, his drain is destroyed, man. <laughs> he got yeah. nothing to live for. He need to go figure out who he's going to be going forward, man. That, that's yeah. good. As soon as he said his, his his member was destroyed, I know he's like, I'm, gonna fight. I'm not fighting anyone anymore, man. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I have nothing to fight for. I'm just fighting for my life now, man. I'm out of here, yep. bro. I'm out of here. Yeah, hey, man, Adam. Hey, man. Big facts. How do you feel? Uh, summer 2026, season three. You ready? You got to. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you, can you wait? You ain't got no fucking choice. But right. um, how do you feel about another two years, man? Another two summers? This this is this is terrible. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. I don't. And, and I'm going to feel the same way I did about this. I'm going to be like, damn, two years went like that. And then I'm going to be super critical, see what happens, and, and then we're going to go from there. But this, 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 this has got to pick up. This is 200. What is it? 200 years before, like the time of um, Daenerys, right? Like between between the rewind and then the fast forward last season, it fucked me up. I know it's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, like, are they are they trying to make us wait? <laughs> like every two, what? Like this is crazy. Like how much time has passed? Like maybe twenty years, bro. Ten percent. Like, listen, hey, but I'm gonna hold my tongue. I'm gonna wait until season three, episode one. If that shit don't open up with a dragon filled red wedding is type. <laughs> like, yo, if I don't see like bloodshed, I swear, I swear to everything. But ever subscription I got at that time in my life, bro, it's getting canceled. Like, like, yeah. This is nah, 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 this ain't it. And if the first episode ain't, ain't popping, I'm gonna just wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just wait till the end. Just waiting every seven days, stuff, man. I'm not, I haven't done that in a while, but I did it with this show. I'll never do that again. Mm-mm-mm. All right, man. All right, let's keep it rolling. What you got? Uh, just a couple things on the music tip. Uh, Kanye West and Ty Dollar dropped Vultures Part Two this past weekend. Not going to lie, a little underwhelming. Felt like it wasn't really done, but hey, it's Kanye. Um, it's not to his old standards. And Ty Dolla Sign didn't do what he could do at his best. So mm. I'm not sure what this was. Um, I think there was, the intro was dope. It was a super dope beat. Um, outside of that, man, maybe, maybe I got to give it another listen. I don't know. It's yay. Maybe there's some genius in there somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. But on the first two listens, not a huge fan. And then... Um, Drake did something the other day. Um, he put like a website out, 100 gig, 100 gigabytes or something, where it was just a ton of unreleased uh, visuals and some behind the scenes studio cuts. But there was three new tracks kind of in the middle of all that. Um, not sure what it's about, uh, why you put all this material out, but so man, you got, you got to get these, you got to get these uh, alleged allegations. Number one hits off you, so I get it. Whatever you got, <laughs> whatever you got to do, man. Just keep distracting the people. Keep throwing more material at them. Hopefully, one of these stick and everybody forget about that that that, that summer banger. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, indeed, indeed. All right, brother. Anything you want to say before we get up out of here? Another, another week down. August is flying by already. That's it. That's it. Yeah, as Kenny said, man, y'all stay safe, man. Stay prayed up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the show where you are now released back into your regularly scheduled programming. Corporate life, parental life, entrepreneurship, whatever it is that you do, we salute you. I'm Senor Lee. Hey, Cat, man. See you next pay week when we lock back in. Good free state of mind.